it gives me great pleasure to uh, welcome Julie Brannan, the Director of Training and Education for the Solicitors Regulation Authority. Welcome, Julie. I Hello, think we've Mark. got six months till November we have. when the new mm -hmm. regime That's kicks right. in. I thought it might be quite useful to go back to basics because mm -hmm. some lawyers still haven't worked out what's going on. So what is the new approach to continuing competence? It's really straightforward. People simply have to think about their work, identify their strengths and weaknesses and do something to put right any weaknesses that they identify. So they need to make sure that they are competent, up to date and safe to practice. And they'll need to keep a record of their personal development plan, any development that they identify and then a log to show what they have done about it. Well you say it's simple but many lawyers have said well the old system was even simpler, it was 16 hours, you turn up, you get your points, you take off. Why did the regulation authority change things? So I think really two reasons. Um, first of all, um, the old system was the wrong way round. It was all about compliance, counting up how much training you had done, counting what sorts of training um, we were prepared to take into account and what we wouldn't. Um, and it wasn't focused enough on competence. It didn't encourage people really to think hard about whether the what training, they really what they really needed, and whether the training that they were doing was making them competent. Um, so that was the first thing. It wasn't really focused uh, enough on competence. The other thing was, it was th that it was rigid and it was a sort of one-size-fits-all approach. So people were doing 16 hours when they needed to do more or were doing 16 hours when actually they, could, they, they didn't need to do a full 16 hours to be competent. And as you know, I mean, there were rules about accredited training and training in our long chunks and, and things like that. And that's gone, hasn't it, accredited and training? All of that has gone. So we don't say anything anymore about the number of hours you've got to do or what sorts of training you need to do. If the training works for you or if the development activity works for you because it means that you're competent and safe to practice, then it's fine by us. So I think you've used the word tick box exercise in the past, so that's yeah. gone completely. Yeah, so it's gone in the sense that you don't have to tick a box to say that you have done 16 Eight hours, hours CPD, yes. but you will have to continue to make a declaration. Um, what you'll have to do is to declare that you have reflected on your practice and you have addressed any learning needs that you have identified. And I think it's right that November is the day to remember. And of That's course right. that ties in with the uh, practicing certificate renewal, doesn't it? E exactly so, yes. So um, at the moment, um, people can opt in to the new approach if they want to. But as you say, from the 1st of November 2016, so the new practice year, people will have to move to the new approach. And then next year, when they come to uh, do their uh, practicing certificate renewal exercise, so that will be in uh, the 31st of October 2017, they'll all have to make a declaration on the new form. And I think you're reminding people about this, aren't you? We are indeed. So um, we're doing a lot of work in terms of webinars, uh, road shows. We're getting out there to try and talk to people as much as possible to make sure that everybody knows about this. And there'll be information included in the reminders about the practice certificate renewal exercise sure. so that everybody understands the new approach starts for all solicitors on the 1st of November this year. And next year, people will have to make a declaration on the new approach. So there's a lot of support out there. <coughs> Lots of support. The most important support um, is our toolkit, our toolkit for CPD. Sure. So anybody who hasn't moved yet to the new approach needs to take a look at the Continuing Competence Toolkit on our website. Lots of information in there. I think there are some videos <coughs> there. There's explanatory there are, documents as well. There are videos there. Um, there are real life case studies. There's all the documentation that you need, a personal development plan, a learning log, all of that material is on there. So, so people should really take a look at it if they're, they're trying to work out how to move to the new approach. Free? Oh, all absolutely free. Because some lawyers have said it's an expensive transition. Is that your experience from speaking well, to lawyers? Well, um, it'll depend in terms of what systems and processes firms want to adopt. But the good news is that in our survey, we asked people, uh, those who had moved to the new approach already, we asked them how much it had cost them and 60% said it was absolutely free, it hadn't cost them anything at all. Now also the other question, time and money, is how long does it take to make this transition to the new regime? Uh, absolutely right and again it's another question that we asked uh, people in our in our little questionnaire uh, and of the people who had already made the move, three quarters of them said they, it took them less than three months. 
Now, we've said earlier that uh, training providers do not need to be accredited anymore. So what counts as training or information towards continuing confidence? Anything that works for the individual solicitor is fine by us. So it needn't be formal training, it needn't be going and sitting in a classroom. Um, it might be that um, you do a, a file review, a lessons learnt review at the end of a matter. Um, if that identifies learning needs that you need to go away and identify, that can be part of your training and development. Uh, it might be you do a piece of research on a, on a case. Again, that's all learning, that's all part of you keeping up to date and acquiring additional learning that you can then use in other cases. So whatever works for you. The key thing to do is to uh, make sure that you have identified your weaknesses, where you, what you need to do to keep up to date and competent, and then anything that suits your learning style is fine by us. So it's the reflection approach. Reflection, And also right. you then need to record it properly, presumably. Re reflection, you do, you do need to record it. Um, so you should keep a, a little plan of what it is that you want to set out to achieve over the course of, your, of, of the year and then what learning you've undertaken to do that. Um, just going back to the sorts of uh, ways in which people learn these days, uh, people will learn, some people learn much better in short bites, you know, they might want to be listening to a, a, a webinar on the bus or there might be bite-sized chunks that uh, education training providers like you, Mark, I'm sure will be putting out to people. So sure. it gives people a lot more flexibility in terms of being able to use the full range of materials which are available to them as well as uh, internal resources within the office and their own learning as part of the job. Now some lawyers or uh, solicitors have cynically said it's the end of CPD but that's not the case is it? So that's absolutely not the case and it's much tougher because in the past people could just go along and snooze at the back of a, a, a dusty conference hall while they were, were trained or actually to you know genuinely pay attention but then forget about it as soon as they got onto the pavement outside. The point about the new approach to continuing competence mm -hmm. is that if you've identified a weakness you do some training or some learning and development activity and then that needs to change the way that you work. So it needs to make Feedback you into the, into the job, yes. Yeah. So it needs to make you a better interviewer or a better negotiator or to mean that you write your letters better. Whatever it is, it needs to actually translate into real activity and a change in the way you do your job. And I, I think we said earlier, there's at the end of each accreditation year, you need to fill in a form, don't you? That's right. So um, people will need to continue to make a declaration. Um, it'll be a declaration that they have uh, reflected on their practice and they've identified, uh, they've addressed any learning needs which they have identified. And what's the role of the SRA with that declaration? We will monitor the information that comes in through that declaration. We will put it in uh, amongst all the information, all the regulatory information that we have about entities and about uh, individuals and where we can see that there is a risk to standards, where we think there is a problem or a potential problem, that then we may engage with the individuals or the firms involved. So we're on the road to the new regime being fully implemented. So, so that's absolutely right. Uh, one thing that uh, perhaps what I might add to that, just going back to your question about the declaration, is the question of whether it's the individual who makes the declaration or the firm or the that firm. makes the declaration. Um, and like at the moment, it can be either. So um, a firm may make a decision to make the declaration, to make a block declaration on behalf of all the solicitors uh, in it. Um, and of course, then uh, the firm will want to put itself in a position that it knows that its solicitors are competent and are up to date. And firms can use their exam existing mechanisms, there are existing one-to-one -one systems, appraisal mechanisms to make sure that they are in a position to be satisfied that they can make that declaration. So you're excited about the next six months? So I think it's it's very exciting, there's a lot to do, uh, people need to engage with it, need to have a look at our toolkit, that's really important, and need to think about how they're going to move to the new approach. But it's now actually happening? But it's now happening and everybody from the 1st of November needs to move to the new approach. Julie, thank you so much. Not at all. Pleasure. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you.